Hi, uh, I'm uh, Ollie Pullen. I've been asked to uh, by Terry to come in and uh, have a quick chat, chat about my uh, recent su success on uh, Dinton Black Swan. It's been a bit of a challenge over there, um, trying to jug, uh, juggle, um, you know, as you get older, having more commitments in life and just being restricted to um, doing Saturday nights most of the time. But um, yeah, the last couple of seasons have been a bit, a bit challenging, um, trying to get something going. Did have a couple of um, decent sessions at the end of last year, um, fishing over bait at range uh, in the sort of autumn feed up sort of season. And then obviously, Last week, or the week before last, I had um, had a good session fishing on zigs. It's a sort of a known area that they winterise. There's a deep bay at one end of the lake. Yeah, they sort of congregate in the middle of there during the winter, and you know when there's colder weather. It hadn't really had lots of form, I don't think, really for mid-winter fishing. But as we know, this, this winter seems to be a bit different, and um, fish have been showing, and pe you know people have been catching them on the on these zigs out in this area. So yeah, you'd be mad not to to, to join in and 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 sort of um, join in on the action. So I um, turned up. Um, I think it was my yeah my first session of this of this spring, and um, sort of four main swims that fish this sort of bowl area and um, you know the fish had sort of been rotating around that bowl uh, one swim would do a few and then the next swim would do a few and and it was more of a case of being in the right swim at the right time and and you know just just putting yourself in the mix with these zigs yeah i chose a swim since 17 done a few fish a couple of weeks previously and it was one of those swims in that main bowl got my zigs out there um, there's a big shelf that runs all the way along this deep bowl 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 like this bay one side's pretty shallow seven eight foot and then the other side goes down to sort of 24 foot in places and the fish sort of spend a lot of time hugging this shelf and it's from one side it's maybe 120 yards the other side it's like more like 90 yards um, so if you're fishing zigs at the sort of bottom of the shelf, but trying to sort of get them up to the same height as the top of the shelf, you know, with these carp are sort of passing along this ridge. So I got them out there, yeah, and the first, um, the first night, I think four o'clock in the morning, had a bite and um, yeah, the rod was flying, you know, not, not your usual zig bite. I was fishing, I think, 12 foot zig in 17 foot of water, something like that. And I uh, got this absolute flyer, so lent it into it, and I thought, you know, this fish would obviously come up the shelf into some weed because it was pretty, you know, pretty, pretty weighty and not moving a lot. But I think it was just, you know, the, the, the weight of the fish on the side. Come in like a dog on the lead, really, from from out into the lake, and um, got it sort of half straight, come straight up and on its side, and I could see it was a you know, really long fish in the darkness. I couldn't see it was a linear or or common, but it was long, you know, longer, longer than anything I'd seen for a, for a long time and ever probably. And uh, got it half over the neck cord, and it just decided it could, it was going to turn and flop out, and, and that, that was it. It was going to going to fight after that. So it's gone up the left margin and plodded around um, for 20 minutes. You know, probably not that long, but it seemed like 20 minutes. But it, it, it was a bit of a dogged fight after that, and uh, got him up into the net. Um, and I, you know. It, I knew it was a good fish before it started fighting, so I was, uh, yeah, it was pr pretty, uh, pretty scary at times while it was heading for snags up the margin. But I got it in, shone the torch, and instantly I see uh, like a sort of a little perchy front dorsal fin, big long linear, and uh, yeah, I could tell it was clearly you know a special fish and something that like, yeah bigger than something that I caught in you know in recent times, and uh, recognised it as a fish called saddleback, which is a uh, you know, one of the real good ones in there. And uh, the thing is with Dinton, there's, there isn't just one real good one, there's, there's a lot of real good ones, and, and that's part of the draw there, that um, there's other fish in there of similar size that don't get caught regularly, you know, and anything can pop up. But this, this saddleback is one that's really, you know, an, an amazing carp, you know, as linear as go, there's, there, that, that, ven, that, that venue is really one of the only places that have that sort of linear, which are that shape, so. And uh, yeah, amazing buzz and um, 
it was about an hour before I light, so I uh, sorted the fish out, phoned the missus up and, uh, and told her, she said, oh, I'm chucking the dog and the boys in and uh, we're going to drive down and see it with you because uh, Holly, my missus, she gets involved with my carp fishing and uh, she was look looking forward to seeing, seeing this fish because, uh, like I said, the previous season and, and season before that hadn't really gone to plan. You know, things don't always go that way. So she uh, had spent a lot of time with me um, and not seeing a fish of that sort of magnitude. So it's great to uh, share that with her. Um, so yeah, we come done with the photos of this saddle back. Um, had been out quite previously, um, not too sure on the weight, but it, you know, I, I didn't, I, I'm, didn't weigh it in all fairness. I'm not that interested in, in the fish's weight. Obviously a big carp is impressive to me, you know, it's, it, it, just because of its, it's got that size, but you know, the actual figures aren't that important. So we didn't weigh it, but it was a, you know, a big impressive carp and, um, we slipped him back and uh, yeah, I had a couple of friends come up, bring me a bottle of champagne and a bit of, bit, yeah, I went to the shops to get some food and, uh, and beer uh, and you know, it was, it was pretty emotional. I remember leaving the shops like nearly welling up, you know, sometimes it means that much and uh, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing day. And then same sort of a, a similar situation happ thing happened the uh, evening after, same time in the morning. And this time it was a, a good battle from the word go and the fish was flopping around in front of me trying to throw the hook out of its head and I could see by this time, it was about an hour later, so it was just getting light and I could see it was another linear. I thought, oh, I can't believe this and a good one and um, managed to get him in the net. He didn't lose the lead on the zig this time, so rod up in the air, lead flopping about, you know, managed to shuffle him in. Um, and it was a fish called the floppy tail linear, um, different in shape to the uh, sort of classic long Dinton ones. It's more of a your classic shape, which is um, you know a bit deeper and a really really wide fish, and uh, with a little floppy tail, zip linear, and just just an amazing carp. It, equally as impressive, really, as the saddleback on the bank as it goes. And um, it was um, we did weigh that one because it doesn't get. It's only been caught. I don't know, I think a handful of times, the amount of times you could put on one hand, that one's been caught, I think. And um, it, yeah, so we weighed it, uh, and I think it was just over 40 pounds. Um, yeah, and equally as impressive, I was blown away. And to uh, catch a uh, another common, a 30 pound common on my last night was uh, icing on the cake. Been a lot of um, Saturdays muddling in and up there and going home frustrated and uh, yeah just showed a bit of perseverance and uh, sometimes yeah things just go your way and uh, yeah it was a great session. So I've been using Terry's bait for uh, maybe 15 years now something like that I think. Um, I uh, Ever since I've bumped into Terry fishing on uh, Raysbury 1 um, yeah maybe that not that long ago 16 years ago something like that um, and I've uh, at the time I was uh, as young Oh, I don't know, I was maybe 20 um, and I was just finished fishing on, um, on Conningbrook and I, um, I'd, a friend had walked me around a small part of Raysbury a few years beforehand and um, we, we saw one carp sitting out in this massive expanse of water and uh, ever since then I decided that, that you know, I was going to go and fish there and um, that was all I knew about it. I'd seen one carp floating and, uh, and for me, you know, Fishing is just a reason to um, go on an, an adventure more than anything. You know, fishing is, is half of it and the, the rest of it is just ex going to new places. And uh, so I got a boat and um, bought a ticket and I went up there in um, the middle of winter and done a, my first night. Um, and I got there at one in the morning after doing a night shift and cast three single pop-ups out into uh, No Carp Bay. Um, obviously didn't have a chance, but um, that was just yeah, my, the start of my my angling on there and um, throughout the year I'd bump into Terry on a number of occasions like sneaking around the edge or one summer's day I bumped into him in a boat which is you know for Terry to actually be in a boat without falling out is is some accomplishment yeah I don't know if it's um, over enthusiastic or um, overconfidence or just clumsiness but yeah he's, uh, he struggles to stay in the boat yeah um, but yeah well, I've I sort of got to know Terry then and for me, um, I, I take confidence in uh, 
um, using a bait that, you know, Terry was making bait when I was still in diapers. And uh, he, you know, he was there experimenting and, and which shows he had an interest at the time, you know, and so I take, I take comfort in that uh, and confidence in the fact that, you know, I'm using the bait which someone that's passionate about it and he's spent time to, to, to mess about with it throughout the years. So, yeah, I've always used Terry's bait and, um, yeah, well, to, to a reasonable effect, you know, and I don't get a lot of time, but, um, so yeah, we're, we're at uh, Brooks Way here, which is another lake I've been fishing. Um, I fished it, I joined it because one of my college friends is uh, the fishery management here, and there's a lot, lot of other um, anglers down here that I've um, known throughout the years, so it was a good chance to catch up with everyone. Like I say, it was, you know, one of my draws to here was the fact that it's really nice and sociable, it's, you know, there's a caravan, we all chill in, and, but also there's a linear in here which has got that old school look to it, and the whole lake has, it's this, uh, sort of an old school theme, you know, you've got one really nice, good fish, a handful of other really nice ones, and then you've got a stock of smaller fish which are all just, they're really old, they're like stunted, but they're black and like beautiful, you know, and uh, every one of them is a pleasure to catch on the way. And you've got like this, this one sort of goal uh, at the end, which is the way that obviously fishing was a lot of years ago when there wasn't a lot, as many big ones about. So yeah, it's uh, a lovely place to fish and uh, fished it last autumn and, you know, put, was baiting the spot regularly, just loads of crumb boily and, um, and maggots and stuff like that, just regularly on the spot. In the, in the middle of the pond and you know after a few weeks got them going and you know catching regularly and most of my fishing is done because obviously work commitments only having a Saturday night fishing here is more local so it means that I can uh, I can work at home on the Saturday or do something with the family and I can do two overnighters maybe a week here so most of the fishing's done in dark hours get here after work and then and then go you know, leaving at five probably to head down to work on one of my jobs. Um, but yeah, when you're, when you're baiting in the evenings, that's enough most of the time to, um, you know, give them something that they want to eat and regularly they're, uh, they're there waiting when you, you turn up after work. So that's how I've been approaching this and uh, not had the lin yet, but you know, it's a matter of time. You keep, keep sticking at it. Hopefully one day he'll, uh, he'll turn up. But i um, seen lots of pictures of him and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Whilst Terry was uh, was doing a bit of filming, found a few fish in the edge and managed to winkle this one out. This is a sort of what you'd expect down at Brooksway. Obviously you've got uh, some lovely old fish like the lint to, to catch, but the uh, smaller ones are just as uh, just as nice. Got this lovely old little common here. I'm gonna slip him back. Uh, so yeah, so that's the sort of uh, fish that you can expect to catch down at uh, Brooks Way. Always a pleasure to catch everyone. I think uh, Luke's gonna be checking in on me uh, over at here and uh, Dinton over the next uh, few months to uh, see how we're getting on. Yeah.